Hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Bill Herter and Ricardo Menjivar. We are HawkeyeMT4.com. We welcome you to um, welcome you to the middle of the night, if you will. Depending on where you are, it may be uh, early evening. If you are over in Europe, good morning. And if you are on the in the states, as as we are, I'm Chicago based. And uh, and uh, Ricardo is LA based, and uh, we're very, very happy to have you with us today. We are, we are friends of Trading Pub, and uh, Sanford and Morgan are, are uh, we know them, we love them. They're great guys, and um, we we like the Trading Pub a lot. It's a great resource, and we're always happy to uh, we're always happy to stop in. Hi, Glenn. Good to see you guys. I'll say this. Fair warning. We're coming into an overnight scent. The lack of sensation here because uh, the Asia, and if you've been watching the FX market at all today, so I, I imagine you have off and on. If you've been watching it all since Asia opened uh, for Business Tuesday, the 26th, which is the date today, you'll know that we are uh, limited. Flows are beginning to slow. Hot, Thanksgiving is one of those weeks in the FX market that is really tends to be slow. There's a lot of lot less flow. They're waiting for the surprise kickoffs that may happen on Thursday and Friday when the U.S. is completely out of it. Friday, the U.S. comes back in, but on a very, very limited schedule. For those of you who have not met us, I am a, um, a multi-decade FX uh, trader and broker. Uh, as Ricardo is a broker as well, we come from uh, Forex backgrounds. I am from the institutional side. Uh, having started uh, back in the 80s on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange on the IMM floor, doing everything from uh, arbitrage and you know running and uh, all the way up to a member of the exchange. I was a, a filling broker for a company at the time that no one probably has heard of uh, anymore. Uh, but I came from Drexel Burnham Lambeer back in the days when the FX action was uh, fast and furious, and uh, in about 92. 91 or 92, I moved off of the floor, the exchange floor, into the provider side. I worked for a merchant bank, kind of a small investment bank in Chicago called the Chicago Corporation. And I learned my, yeah, Michael Milken, exactly. That was his, that was his uh, company most notoriously. But believe me when I tell you, Drexel was a much bigger entity than uh, Michael Milken, yeah, although he was, the, he was the guy that wound up going to prison and putting him on the map. <laughs> for good or for bad, but it spawned a lot of great traders back in those days. Drexel did. We had a $35 million FX desk out of the New York office, and I was their guy in the uh, British pound pit on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and it was a lot of fun back in those days. We used to rock and roll. Those were the, the free swinging days of the, on the floor when you could still get an education on the floor. At any rate, we've morphed into um, we've morphed into fully transparent platform trading, as you all know. In those days, it was very, very different. And it started in the 90s when Globex started. And uh, Globex was actually owned by Reuters. Uh, they, they're the ones that came up with the thing. It was going to be their their small private trading, online trading uh, entity. And it was eventually, it, brought, it was done in partnership with Chicago Mercantile Exchange, because obviously that's where the futures contract started. Excuse me, but um, uh, the Chicago Merc eventually took it over lock, stock, and barrel, and has turned it into the you know the multi-armed behemoth that it is. Globex is now the the place to trade futures on a 24-hour-a-day basis. It's a it's a fascinating electronic platform. But in the FX markets, as you all know, we now have a fully transparent 24-hour-a-day marketplace that runs around the world, around the clock. It opens Sunday, uh, midday Sunday, when um, the Pacific Rim wakes up. In the old days, they used to have quite a book of business over in Australia. Uh, Wellington, New Zealand, um, Melbourne, and Sydney were all big money centers. They had a big book of business. So we were always there back in the day, probably by, we were open, you, most, 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 um, FX companies open around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, between 1 and 3 in the afternoon, Eastern time, on Sundays for business. 
it wasn't a lot of business, but as I said, they had a big book in those days. And it's since become a very, very large, wonderful 24-hour-a-day institution that we all know and love. And pricing, because pricing has come to where it is, available to the average retail trader now, and you can get, you know, it's so transparent, there are no arbitrage possibilities between prices, meaning there are no, there's no opportunity to buy and sell those fractions of uh, little fractions uh, the way they used to back in the old days when you would you would get a price in Canadian dollar on one place and and buy it and if it was cheap and then sell it more expensive at another shop and if you'd have multiple accounts you could book the difference and that's called arbitrage. Nowadays we position trade because we are much uh, we have much many more tools at our disposal. And the fact is that the marketplace is transparent across all of the platforms around the world. Everyone has access to the same basic bid and offer spread. And Ricardo and I have taken Nigel Hawks' tools uh, and turned them into something that is very FX specific in our world because that's the world that we came from and that's the world that we are operating in right now. And because of the fact that we have these wonderful, uh, this wonderful technology to us, we have discovered that this is a terrific way to, um, to look at market formations in a way that I've never seen before. In, my, in all my career, I've seen you know, charting systems galore of just about everything you can imagine. We all see the same charts. I say this all the time in our room. We all come. The institutional backdrop is the backdrop against which we, are, we trade. We are market followers. We are not market makers. We are market takers. We have to be because that is the nature of the game. So in a predictive manner, we try to look at past data normally and come up with what's likely to happen in the future. That's the nature of the business of charting and technical trading. Um, as such, we don't, there are very few magic eight balls out there that you can simply shake and get an idea where the market's going. But we do have an indicator called the fat man that is unique in this industry. And it is a strength meter like no other uh, because it breaks down the currencies in, a, in such a fashion. I'll let Ricardo explain it in greater detail. Um, and, and he'll give a little background on himself. He comes from a, he was a broker. He, he started out a retail trader like everyone else. He invested a lot of money in retail systems. He was fascinated by the FX markets. And uh, after he gave, he gave his donation to the marketplace at large, he, uh, I, he decided to do what everybody does or what many people do in our industry and that's become a broker and find out what the secret is, what the inside deal is. And uh, as a result, he's now involved in trading heavily but from a different perspective. We're really trying to sort of change the odds here uh, against the retail trader. As we all know, it's about a 3% of you out there actually make money at this racket. And the rest of the retail traders, the 96 or 97 percent out there, that's sort of an just a. It's been my experience that it's about a three percent proposition. Ninety percent of you will lose your about 80 percent of your equity trading, and that's simply because it's really a difficult market to make money at consistently, as particularly if you haven't been on the inside of the institutional marketplace. Well, I have. And uh, Ricardo has as well. I come from a, a, a the true institutional background. We have, we I've sold, bought and sold liquidity. I've run a, I've run a desk. Uh, I've managed a 24-hour trading desk and agency desk for a Chicago brokerage. I've worked at some of your notorious uh, companies along the way that have all been sort of gobbled up by. Uh, uh, in the mergers and acquisitions side of the business, which makes our industry really smaller and smaller. And it is a small industry after all, and uh, all the people that are inside this uh, know it. What we bring to the table here is a little sort of insider's knowledge as to how this marketplace really trades. So tonight, or this morning, I hope you will learn a little bit about our technology. We're going to look for trade setups that are likely to be setting up 
Uh, I don't think we're we're not seeing trades right now that are are looking really spectacular, and Ricardo will explain when we demonstrate the Fat Man for you what it should look like when it's trading properly. We'll look back at a couple of trades, we'll look back in time, and we'll we'll demonstrate how our technology identifies trades, and uh, we will see if we can look for setups that are on the on the board. But I can tell you right now, there's zero data. In the UK tonight, there's nothing coming out until uh, five and a half hour at 7:30 or 8:30 Eastern time um, when there's some U.S. data coming out. That's the next possibility that we have any sort of market movement. Uh, we're seeing a lot of sort of tubing and setting up and trading inside the tracks, if you will. And um, uh, other than that. I can tell you the euro is underpinned at, at 135. It's had some supportive comments. Uh, dollar yen is just sort of sideways at, trading around 101.50. Uh, there's 102 barriers up above, and those option barriers are always uh, are held uh, in check because there's a lot of option activity out there. there if, as you may or may not know, FX options is a very deep market and one that the institutional traders utilize quite a bit and you're going to see something in our technology if you haven't seen it before you're going to see something pretty interesting we have some very very interesting tools and we have something that talk about being predictive we have something that really no one out there has the fat man it's a terrific terrific uh, tool and I'm gonna let Ricardo explain it to you in a little greater detail I will be uh, answering your Q&A in the background I'll be interrupting Ricardo uh, off and on. We'll be talking. We talk back and forth over each other quite a bit during these sessions. But um, uh, so feel free to hit me in the Q and A panel if you have any questions as we go along about the technology. And as we serve, as we get to the toward the end and start wrapping up, we'll take your questions in more uh, in more uh, detail. But if you see trading setups that you want to ask about, if you have any general questions about FX. Try to make them relevant to the whole room, and we'll um, we'll address them as we go along. So, without any further ado, uh, turn it over to my partner and friend Ricardo Menjivar, and uh, let's uh, let's explain to everybody the Hawkeye technology and the Phoenix trading method. Ricardo, if you will, you want to take it away? Yep. Good morning, everybody. Good evening to those of you that are night owls like myself and Bill. Uh, today we are going to be uh, talking about how HawkeyeMT4.com is providing a new vision in trading technology and helping traders trade with more confidence. Um, I'm going to be using quite a few terms very loosely, and Phil's going to be uh, coming in and clarifying in many times why I use rebalancing as a very loose term. Uh, but you'll start to understand why. Uh, first things first, like Bill said, uh, you know, I come from a retail background. I started trading about nine years ago, and like I said, I contributed a lot of money to the FX market. Um, after a few years, I discovered that it was time for me to learn more about the market and try and discover the inside mechanics behind it. And um, that was really because I came across a very interesting individual who also lost his head in the market uh, by the name of Nigel Hawks. And he actually came to a, a user group. and that's when we actually met. He gave his his little spiel and his introduction about what his history was, and he said, you know, how he was fascinated with volume spread analysis. At the beginning, I didn't really catch on to volume spread analysis that well. Quite honestly, volume was just not a part of my my or my methodology for trading, and it took me quite a few years to really come to terms with that. But he did inspire me to actually. Seek more information, you know, become a truth seeker, as, if you will. And that's why I became a broker. I became a broker because I wanted to discover more truth about the market. I wanted to discover the reason why retail traders just couldn't figure this market out. Because many of us are professionals in our own fields. And this is one of those markets that will humble you. It will confuse you. It will perplex you. And eventually it will break you psychologically even destroy you. And the reason for it is that it's very simple. The game is rigged. The game is rigged against a retail trader. But 
if you understand why why it works the way it works, then at that point you can start to change the odds, start to manage your risk better. Because make no mistake, every time that you place an order, you take risk on. That's just the way this industry is. That's just the way this is wired. Any trade that you take on, you take risk on. Well, we're here to show you that even though you take risk on, there's a way to minimize your risk. There's a way to manage your risk properly. And the method that we've designed is called the Phoenix Trading Method. The reason why we call it the Phoenix Trading Method, and this is something that myself and Bill came up with, is primarily because we're trying to help traders rise from the ashes of failure. Quite honestly, most traders have failed. There, is, there isn't any way to sugarcoat it. It's a reality. But retail traders have failed because of the lack of information, lack of, of disclosure in the industry. Because if the industry would have told you that the game was rigged, you would have never jumped into it. Well, you're right. Unfortunately, we've all jumped into it, and we've been fascinated by it. But now, we're going to look at it from a different perspective. We're going to look at it from, from a perspective of truth, of what is actually going on in the background, the real mechanics that make this market turn. And that's where the fat man indicator comes in. You know, By far, I think it will be a legacy indicator for Nigel. It'll be one thing that he'll be remembered for when he's gone. Because, if anything, it has impacted me as a trader and will impact many of you as traders. You will definitely look at the market from a different perspective. Because, make no mistake, this market has no master. It is a market where those that control it are large institutional banks. You have your proprietary desks that come in. Uh, and then you have your retail traders that come in. The retail market doesn't really move the FX market the way many people think. It's actually driven by the banks. And if you understand how the banks operate, then you'll understand how they take advantage of this market, how this market can work for you, or how the information that you're going to be given today can make you better. It will enlighten you in, in a manner that will make you look at risk from a different perspective. So let's go over this real quickly, and we'll get into it. <clears throat> like many of you, you will discover one thing that we've discovered, what the Fat Man Indicator is. For me, it's a, it's a Forex trader, an early warning device. It helps clear the trading fog. You'll discover today these things. Number one, it helps minimize trade entry risk. It helps support, enhance, and improve any trading strategy. In and, no and way do I. That's advocate. any trading strategy. This trading this strategy. works In no way. regardless of your trading strategy. This this is a terrific indicator. That's very different. Let you know. One of the things that you're going to discover is that good traders or successful traders that have figured out this market are good at one thing, chart pattern recognition. Very good at it. But they don't, they're missing one key factor, volume. Where is the volume? Where is the influence? This indicator will keep traders into those extremes of strength and weakness, where, and eliminate the pairs with no clear direction. You're going to see in vivid color the standout currencies and pinpoint pairs that are ready to break away. This indicator will help to identify trades one to three hours before they happen. Now, in this market, you and I both know that if you are not, if you don't have all the information, many times we make decisions on a minute, five minutes. Every moment is, is key. However, if after what we show you, you can tell that you're going to have an opportunity to ride the wave of a specific currency pair that is being ready to be rebalanced. I'm going to use that term very loosely. Those are going to interfere once in a while. I'm trying to clarify if I get off point. 
one of the things that you're going to discover this indicator does is that it does re show you how they are rebalancing their currency portfolio. We're just touching upon eight Australian, Swiss franc, the euro, British pound, Japanese yen, yen, dollar, and eight currencies. Ricardo, this you're you're fading a little bit. Excuse me, you're fading a little bit. You're vocal. Oh, sorry about that. This indicator, much better. You will discover that it, this indicator. You will discover that it extracts individual currency strength and weakness from 49 pairs that are derived from these eight major currencies, and it shows you how money is in continuous motion. But not the, not just that it is in continuous motion. The fact that it's showing you when banks are interested in rebalancing certain currency pairs, not because they want to, but because they have to. Because they take currencies out of balance and bring them back into balance. Well, All day long, this is a game that they, that, that they do exactly, constantly. Unfortunately, it is a game that you as a retail trader have not been familiarized with. And the reason why I am able to explain this to you is because of the background that I have developed as a broker, as Bill as well. Because this is the whole reason why I got into the game. This is the whole reason why I got into the industry. I wanted to discover what made this industry tick. I learned many things in the back office. I learned how, you know, how to design bank feeds for uh, large institutional traders. And I ne but I still didn't understand why. The why factor is that which kills you. Well, you're going to learn one thing today, that market makers and institutional traders cannot hide strength or weakness from the fat man indicator. In fact, you're going to discover that their volume activity contributes to the fresh insight traders gain by using this technology. It is to the disadvantage of the institutional traders or the banks that technology has evolved. But I don't think they ever thought for one moment that there would be a strength meter, a volume indicator, if you want, if you want to call it that, that would quantify their volume activity and how they are directing it to different currencies. So we're going to go to the chart, and I'm going to explain this to you, how this, how this works. And I'm going to yeah, take you first to. A, let's have a look at a fat man right here. This is the fat man live. So this is the fat man live in the four hour. Now, the each line that you see here is not a moving average. It describes each individual currency. This orange line describes the sterling. The green one, the euro, the aqua or cayenne the United States dollar, the white one, the Swiss franc, the blue, the New Zealand dollar, yellow, the Canadian dollar, the red, the Australian, and last but not least, the magenta or purple, the Japanese yen. Now in the higher time frames, this is describing right now certain currencies that are rebalancing. Number one, we look for strength and weakness. Why? Because what the banks are doing is that they are literally taking these currencies out of balance in order to rebalance them. Well, at this particular moment, we're looking at, on the four hour, we're looking at the New Zealand, the Australian that have been taken to levels of weakness that can no longer be sustained. And because they can no longer be sustained, must be rebalanced and brought back up, which is exactly what has happened. Now, the same, same is to be said for the sterling, the US dollar, Euro, the Swiss franc. They've been taken to levels of strength that can no longer be sustained and must be rebalanced. Well, we look for opportunity in this rebalancing when you see that these currencies can no longer sustain their levels here, or these currencies can no longer sustain their levels here and must cross. And when they cross, that's when we look for opportunity. As for the currencies that you see in the middle, there's simply no interest cut and dry, the banks have no interest in rebalancing these two currencies. 
in the four hour, which are the Japanese yen and the Canadian dollar. But they do have a very strong interest in rebalancing the British pound, the Swiss franc, the euro, and the dollar to the downside. And they do have a, a tremendous interest in rebalancing the New Zealand and the Australian to the upside. Well, this gives you a clear picture. We analyze this, but we don't trade off of the four hour. We go to the smaller time frames. And the reason why we do this is because the four hours, you can see here, is giving you a very clear picture in the long term, what is happening? Well, as you go to the smaller time frames, you get a much clearer picture. Here, for instance, we've seen that <laughs> if that's the clear. Australian, well, it's a lot more clearer. Yeah. <laughs> if you really think about it, <coughs> on the four hour, we were seeing the Australian and the New Zealand that had reached levels of weakness that could no longer be sustained and were basically brought back into balance. On the one hour, we're seeing that they were taken up. Well, we're also seeing that the sterling was brought down, as well as the euro, the Swiss franc, and the dollar. Now, as confusing as this looks, you're looking for extremes of strength and weakness. You're seeing them here. Now, one of the things that you're seeing here in the one hour is that the British pound, the euro, and the Swiss franc are looking to rebalance to the upside. Well, the four hour, you, can, coming, you can think of them, friends, you can think of down. it as being overbought and oversold the same way. When they're down there below the 20, they're oversold. And when they're up there, as the Aussie, the red Aussie, is up above 85 there, you can think of it as overbought. It's just a simple matter right. of what, what gets overbought has to come down, what gets oversold has to come up. That's what this is telling you. The trick to the fat man, as Ricardo's explaining, is understanding the differences in the variance in the time frames. This is a look ahead indicator because that angle that it's pointing at is telling you where it's likely to be going in the future. That's the key to using this tool. So go, so go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Right. No, no, no. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it. He's right. It's the key to looking into the future because we are not looking into the past as much as we are into the future. The future is where they're looking at. And they're pretty much telling you at this particular time that they have taken the Australian to a level of strength that can no longer be sustained, and they must weaken it. Just like they've taken the sterling, the euro, the Swiss franc, and even the dollar to a level of weakness that can't be sustained. Well, when you look at this, you're looking for opportunity with these currencies. And in this case, there's quite a few quite a few opportunities that you're looking at. You're looking at the Australian Swiss, the Euro Aussie, the Sterling Aussie, and even the Aussie dollar as potential combinations. You can see now that we have, that the hour has come upon us, you can see how the Australian is starting to point down now. And you're seeing the Sterling starting to point up as well as the euro and the Swiss franc. The dollar is not. It appears here like the dollar is still going to rebalance to the, to the downside one more time to finish recycling down. And when that happens, it doesn't mean that you're going to look for the euro and uh, the euro dollar or, or sterling dollar to go up. It just means that the best potential opportunities or trades to look for in this case are the pound Aussie, the Euro Aussie, and even the Swiss, the Aussie Swiss. Very unique pairs. These are exotic pairs within the eight majors. Pairs that most of you don't really look at. The reason you don't is because everyone out there tells you to trade the Euro dollar, the pound dollar, the US Swiss, the US CAD, the US Yen, um, and because that's where most of the liquidity lies. They're right. Most of the liquidity in those pairs lies in those pairs. However, it doesn't mean that the banks are using them to rebalance their currency portfolio. Remember, this is a basket of currencies. Don't you want to know where that basket is going? Well, that's exactly what this indicator is doing. And that's exactly what our methodology shows you. It shows you where the basket is going. Now here in the one hour, there's one particular currency, currency pair that has been taken out of balance, 
because it's getting to ready to rebalance. And the one that I'm talking about is the Canadian against the Swiss. The cat Swiss. Why? Because they were both going in the same direction. And suddenly, they devalued the Swiss, and they've strengthened the, the, the Canadian. And now it looks like they're going to cross right, right smack in the middle. Well, we're waiting for that same cross or merger between the Australian, the Sterling, the Euro, and the Swiss. Now, this is on the one-out. If I could just butt in for one second, what we're looking for is kind of a symmetrical pattern on the charts. We're looking at activity when they're over, when they're out of balance, they're up around, they're above 80 or below 20 on this meter. But the gauge itself, the center line, that 50% or mean or zero, as we like to think of it sometimes, that's the key area that we're looking for. We're looking for some kind of symmetrical pattern or something interesting right around the middle of the chart because that's where we know that they must go to become neutral, so to speak. So whether they're going out of balance and, and diverging from that zero point or they're coming from overbought, oversold situation, have to rebalance towards zero there, or 50%. That's the kind of patterns that we're looking for. So Ricardo's calling this CAD Swiss out because he sees a neat pattern. And to see how they're approaching one another there, they're, they're, those, those jaws are closing, they're pinching there. That looks very, very interesting, I must say, sir. And as we go to the smaller time frame, you'll see exactly that. You'll see that they've crossed the Swiss CAD right here. You see the Swiss basically to the upside, the CAD to the downside. So here we see a much clearer picture. Now, in regards to the Australian and the British pound, you can also see that they're starting to cross here, as well as the Euro Aussie. You see that basically the Euro has come down, has come up, as well as the Sterling, and the Australian and New Zealand have been coming down. And so here you're starting to see the validity of this transition, but you're seeing it happen in a smaller time frame because it is basically just giving you a quick snapshot of what is already happening in the higher time frame, but it's not as clean, not as transparent. This is a little bit more clean. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to trade off the one hour or that you're going to look for your entry off of the one hour or the four hour. No, no, no. It just means that you're looking at something which is has a clearer picture, and so now you have to go down into the smaller minutes and really see, is that actually taking place? Is it going to actually unfold? And from this point is when you decide, do I need to start going to the charts to take a look at this? The answer is yes. But you also want to go down to the smaller time frame, because now you're going to see even more clarity. You've already, we've already seen that the CAD and the Swiss have broken the opposite directions. They've already crossed, and it's already happened. You're also seeing that the British pound and the CAD has all, have also broken their ties, as well as the Euro. So the Euro CAD, the Swiss CAD, and the pound CAD are in play. You also have the pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, Euro Aussie and Euro New Zealand also in play. Now, here they haven't followed through completely. But you can see here that they are already getting set up to take place. So there's quite a bit of information that's being provided by this indicator. It's telling you the volume activity, where it's being driven. And that's the one thing that you can't tell when you're looking at regular charts. If you've noticed, I've only looked at one chart, and I've only looked at one indicator. Well, the one thing that we're going to show you when you come to our trading sessions is that we're going to show you how to interpret this, how to go from a higher time frame to a lower time frame and identify opportunity where normally you would say there is none in the market. And we're going to go over that real quickly because, quite honestly, if we were to look at, we see that there's opportunity in the Euro Aussie because it crossed. Well, let's see if it's really valid. And the question is, 
Yes, it is becoming this very is, valid. This is the Euro Aussie 15 minute. Exactly. We use MT. We use MT4. No. We use MT4 exactly. And you're going to discover one thing right now. We're either right or wrong. Well, what this has been telling you, this currency pair has been shorting in the higher time frames. And almost everyone would say, oh, this thing's going to go short. This thing looks like a perfect head and shoulders to the downside. You may be right. However, this indicator is telling you otherwise. So if this indicator is telling you otherwise and the volume activity is telling you otherwise, do you really think they're going to short it? The answer is no. The reason for it is very simple. We're going to show you one of the key factors that we use <coughs> to actually determine where their volume activity is being driven. We use these pivots, these isolated highs, isolated lows. These are trend dots. These are more neutral. They're what, I call, what we call consolidation dots. The green dots are bullish. The stars and the line, these are trend stops. But they also line up with the levels of the pivots. <coughs> so everything has its place in this formula. But the pivots, we look for specific ranges. The reason why is because if those ranges are being respected, then we know that there's a high probability that, that a transition is coming. Now in this case, the range that we're seeing here is 20 pips. We look for 10 to 20 pip ranges within the pivots. If we find them, then we know that we may have a valid transition taking place doesn't mean that it's going to play out. It just means that it's coming very close to it. And so we do this. We box in these pivots to really see exactly where this is heading. Well, here's another 20 pips. So basically, from this point, from here to here, that's, that's a 40 pip range. However, we saw that they broke out to a higher level right here. We've seen a tremendous period of consolidation. We've seen a change in the heat map, which is saying that the volume is no longer bearish, but really bullish, and it's transitioning to become bullish. We're seeing the volume activity here very undecisive. The bears, in this case, didn't do much. They lost control. Why? <clears throat> I'll explain why. The way this, this trade is, is panning out is the following. Once they decided that they were going to change directions, two things happened. Number one, they set the level. They identified it very clearly. This was the level that could not be broken. And if it is broken, then basically it will go short. But if it is not broken, it's going to be retested. And it's going to be tested quite a few times. And every time, they're going to find an excuse to go higher. Well, that's exactly what they did. They came down. They said, OK, we can't break this level here. So they retested for buyers. Didn't find any at this level. Then came back down, retested for sellers. They weren't going to break this barrel, so they came back here. They retested for buyers again, came to a higher level. They came back down, retested for sellers. Why are they coming back down here? Because they know that they are finding buyers here. They know that there are buyers here. So they're going to come and retest this level every time that they don't get a following. Well, the following is not you and I. The following is a bigger whale. They're looking for an institutional trader to come in and basically say, I need to offset and I need to buy euros against the Aussie. Yeah, they're, look, they're looking. Sell my for, Aussie and they're they're Go looking ahead. for customers in their wheelhouse, their type of customers who are going to give them the kind uh, the kind of volume that they can take to their mm -hmm. advantage. Because after all, they're they're providing the other side of these trades. It's the secret to understanding exactly. institutional volume is to understand, and the mindset is to understand that they're buying. If the ins, if the clients are selling to them, if the, when Ricardo says they're testing for sellers, means they're offering them cheaper. And they're looking to see if these guys are willing to sell it to them 
on the cheap. And, and as you can see, the pivots are rising higher and higher, Ricardo. I thought I'd just mention that. Um, uh, about the uh, and they are buying and selling. you can you can see that the isolated lows are getting higher and higher and every time they're testing for buyers at a higher level now every time that they fail they come back down and retest and they set a higher level where they can initiate more buying because they know that they've already this part of the equation has already been set and this part of the equation is offsetting their Aussies, Aussie positions, and taking up Euro positions. So here, for instance, they're inducing traders to go short. Now, normally, if you were, as a retail trader, without understanding the true psychology of what they're doing, you would be going short. You'd be saying, well, Ricardo, this looks to me like a Fibonacci retracement. Well, let's see and that. The trend, and the trend is your friend, et cetera, et cetera. The trend is your friend. Look at this. It's a 23% retracement. And the trend is your friend. Well, let me tell you something. Don't be disappointed when I say this, but quite honestly, they know that you've been taught this. And they're going to use it against you. And so what they do is that they allow you to think that that's what's going to happen. And what they're going to do is that they're going to come right back down, retest, going to make you all happy and think, oh, joy, we're going to go short. And then they're going to react, and they're going to say, gotcha. And they're going to drive this thing along. And that's why you're seeing this transition in volume. Now, if look at this volume bar. This volume bar is pretty strong. But did price action follow through? The answer is no. This type of price action should be literally devastating, this level, and it's not. This you mean candle devastating, is hitting, so it, hitting it lower. That's what you mean by hitting devastating. Hitting it lower and hard and heavy, lower it's, literally it's driving full, price. It's a big down. candle of bearish volume. Oh, of course. Instead, you don't have that. Instead, you have a smaller bullish candle, bullish volume bar here basically telling you that their institutional volume is really driving it to the upside. Now, granted, anytime you see a wide bar, it means that there is a lot of institutional money in there. Why? Because their interest lies there. I have a different interpretation of the wide bars than my friend Nigel, and only because I look at it from a different perspective. I'm seeing how they are manipulating their volume to induce traders to lose. Well, now you can see that the transition is in play, and it's bullish at this point. You can see the trend dots have changed. You can see the trend stops have started to move. You can see, you can see the heat map even more bullish at this point. And so this, you, at this point, looks like you, a breakout trade. Why don't you explain the heat map uh, for those of us who haven't seen it before? The heat map works in, in three levels, slow, fast, and aggressive. When it's bright red, it is all three speeds are going in the same direction, slow, fast, aggressive. If it turns green, that means that it is going slow, bearish, slow, fast, bullish. When it turns bright green, it is slow, fast, aggressively bullish, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. But one thing that we're also seeing is that price action has broken above the hard stop. And Nigel calls this a crash barrier. And he's right. It is a crash barrier. Because as soon as it breaks this level, that means that their intent is really bullish. The only thing that we need here is follow through. But one thing that we do have very clear in our minds is that they've already decided to break through. As you can see, the euro, since yesterday, had already started to rebalance to the upside very slowly. They're following through. The Australian dollar had already started to rebalance to the downside. Now, granted, it had been trading here in a very imperfect way, but the oscillated. overall picture, yeah, the overall picture is 
that they're willing and wanting to drive the euro long and the Aussie short. We're getting a little bit more angle and separation on the 30 minute, which is nice. Now we just need the follow through. However, one thing is stopping us here, and that is this level right here. The hard stop is right, right there. If it breaks above 147.53, and it's currently trading at 147.40, which is really 13 pips away, then at that point we know that it's going to stream to the upside. And the next level would be here, which is about 148.10. This is so those old suddenly we go from 147.40. Back, back in time. Exactly. Exactly. And these becomes these levels become your exits. One thing that we teach or we show people is that we show them how to find the right entries. That's what we look for. We look for high probability entries that will unfold. This is exactly what we're finding. Now, I know for some of you this is new. And it's hard to believe that this could be how the game is rigged. Well, guess what? You're right. This is it. Volume activity is the final piece of the puzzle that many retail traders simply don't have because they don't understand it. And it's least of all understood in Forex because there is no centralized exchange. This is one of, the, one of those markets where basically you can't tell what their volume is. But guess what? They can tell what your volume is. Well, now you have that same option. You have that same advantage. This toolkit actually puts you on the VIP list that they don't want you to be in. Because in order to be on their VIP list, you normally have to have $100 million. <clears throat> and then you're invited into the club. Well, yeah, you. You we need some dough to get on that ra radar. That institutional radar screen. You need some big money. Exactly. You need to be a customer. You need to be some sort of a fund manager, some sort of a big trader. Those are the people that have information sometimes shared with them, sometimes used against them because it's an institutional game. We're playing it in on their playing field. And that's why it's been so traditionally unfair. But we try to bring a set of tools and a perspective of looking at this market that you just haven't seen before. And that's be one of the reasons is because we understand how the game is rigged and how it's really played. And their volume can be used against them because it's contributory volume. It's a good a spot as any to interject this, Ricardo, if you don't mind, because we've yes, had a couple I'm of volumes. Allow me to, to make the introduction for you. Bill is going to give you one of the best explanations on how volume is reported in the forex market. Pay attention because, it, because as, it's more likely you're never going to hear this again. And it is probably the most you important have, factor. As a couple of you have already mentioned in the Q&A side, there is no, there is no <clears throat> true volume in, in FX. As Ricardo said, there's no centralized exchange, but there is, in fact, the one, the one thing that drives this market, the engine that drives this market and these charts is the volume, literally, that's contributed uh, over this vast electronic network. And if you have a good, robust aggregator, as we, we, use, we use a couple of liquidity providers that are, are key to us. We use one, of our, one of our friends, our partners, is DirectFX. Uh, they're licensed in Australia. And we also use ILQ for our US-based business. They provide, they have institutional aggregators. They literally have some of the biggest liquidity aggregators on the market these days. It's a commercial venture. I mean, people sell liquidity. You have to understand that it's put together and offered by vendors to these institutions so that they can do, <coughs> excuse me, what they do very well and these aggregators pick up all of this tick data that's coming in constantly so whenever a trade is made large enough to hit the the electronic circuits so to speak not your trades we're talking about institutional trades unless you're a big trader and you trade you know like a maybe you trade a what's called a buck uh, that's a million US notional a million US equivalent or a million euros for example notional amounts you always trade on leverage in FX but you, you trade the notional amount, and the bigger traders, 
whenever you look at, at the big price aggregators out there, institutional traders don't trade on MT4s. They trade on basic click and grab platforms that have depth of market in them. In other words, they can always see that there's 10, 15, 25 million of a currency on the bid and the offer. And they know that when it's the offers are starting to thin out, the size on the offer disappears, and then the price goes up. It's the dynamic that moves the market. Well, each time a trade is made in the electronic marketplace, now that it's all been institutionalized and put in one place, basically one electronic network around the world, you get to see via these institutional aggregators the tick data that literally is their volume. So when we say that we have volume on these volume bars in the middle and the lower third of your chart, you see, you're seeing real volume. It's contributory volume. It's the trades that are made. They're the buy trades, the sell trades, the neutral trades. Basically, the algorithm sort of defines it in terms of its directionality, if you will, by being an offer trade, a bid trade, or you know what I mean? Higher, lower, that type of thing. That's how you get the colors on the uh, volume bar. So it literally is reading contributory volume from the thousands of desks that are out there clicking and grabbing all day long and fulfilling their customer orders, which can be proprietary desks, it can be small funds, it can be large macro funds. The black box traders are kind of kept off to the side because those those auto traders are a little bit different. They are, they, they've designed liquidity that's sort of standalone for these, for these black box traders, these high frequency traders. They don't sort of let them in the room, if you will, because that's called what's known as, well, look at, just as we're talking, it broke the crash barrier and it's starting to take off. They're, they're rebalancing this euro. So anyways, um, um, the contributor, it's, I'll just recap it this way. No, there's no centralized exchange. There's no actual volume number that you can get your hands on. But if you've got a good Forex at liquidity aggregator, volume is the key to the whole thing because if it's buy volume, it's important because they're rallying it. If it's sell volume, it's important that they're because they're selling it. It may be in the case of this chart, a big volume, a red volume bar that goes nowhere. Well, that tells you a lot of information. That gives you something to more to the equation. So when Ricardo tells you about how this has to be a picture, it has to look a certain way, he means what he says. Listen to him because he's about to tell you one of the things that the, where this is going. This this clearly was breaking up, and uh, now I'll go back. To, I'll let it, let it go back to him. But that's the volume. That's the volume story in FX. Hit it, man. And this is the Phoenix trading method. This is the method that we've designed behind these indicators. You can't find it anywhere else because no one else teaches it because no one else understands it. We understand volume in the forex better than anyone out there. And I say that very loosely because I haven't found anyone that gives that had given me this explanation ever before. It is by far something that will fascinate you only because now you can understand where their interest lies. Well, if you would have looked, as I said before, if you would have looked at this particular currency pair, you would have said, well, this is a head and shoulders. This has to go down. Well, it didn't. It went yeah, up. Yeah, the fat man was telling this you a different story. And this indicator was telling you hours in advance that it was going to slow down to the downside and start to rebalance right back up. So. From this point, you pretty much know, and I told you, once it broke 147.53, this was going to break to the upside to the next level. Well, we're at that next level right here. If it breaks this level, then it will come to 148.18. That is where it's going to be driven. Why? Because they've chosen to rebalance this currency pair. This is where their interest lies. And if you can understand this concept, if you're, if you, if I finally woke you up, let me tell you something. You need to go get yourself a cup of coffee, go throw some water in your face, slap yourself a little bit, and say, "I need to listen to this guy because this guy is doing something that I'm not." 
and he's identifying volume activity from a whole other level that I've never seen before. And if this isn't exciting, then literally slap yourself. Wake yourself up because right before you, I gave, we basically announced a trade. We said this was not going to go short. This was going to go long, and that's exactly what it's doing. And it's still doing it right in front of you. But now let's go look at and let's go look at another pair. You've seen this now one. Let's look around. Come back. Let's look around for other pairs. This is something that we, were, that we do in, in in our trading room. We look for the 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 world will tell you to trade the euro dollar, but what did we find the euro Oz? This is where we we like to go to these outlying pairs because we can, a we can get in and out of them very easily. It's MT4. Right. It's it's there's a bid and offer out there. We can hit it or we can lift it. And it's easy to trade these outlying pairs, and that's where we look for these op trading opportunities because the banks tell you to trade the euro dollar or the pound dollar, the sucker play, because that's their that's their world. That's where they do all their trade dumping. But if you want to exactly. get into and make these pips, come with us and ch trade these outlying pairs. It's not that we won't trade the euro dollar, but it's right. kind of a, tends to be a sucker's game. And I'll explain why it's a circus game. You see how this pair right here, they're both going in the same direction? Do you know why this is happening? Because their volume activity here is very deceiving. They're throwing ticks every way they can throw them. And so the indicator itself is telling you that this pair is too dangerous to get involved in. Finally here, they broke it out. Now, what, what does this mean to you right now? Well, I'll give you an example. On the 30 minute, it was announced that it was going to that the euro was going to break out and the dollar was already coming short. We had seen that. On the 15 minute, basically, I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole. You couldn't pay me to take this risk on. Why? Because this is the currency that they choose to chop. They used to chop wood, and guess what? You're the wood, and they're chopping your account to pieces. <laughs> so you can either become yeah. a victim, or you can become informed. And I'd rather be informed and take a look at a trade where the risk has been calculated and the outcome is much better than the nonsense that they're going to put me through with this. Now, you can continue to trade the euro all you want. Make no mistake, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Once in a blue moon, the euro breaks out and it rebalances, just like these other currencies do. And I look at it only when that happens. When it doesn't happen, I'm not interested. You couldn't pay me to look at it. Why? Because I know what's going to happen. It's going to be very dangerous. Now, we were talking about the Aussie Swiss. Remember? I told you that the Aussie Swiss was also in play. Well, I'm going to take you to that, that power play. It's right here. What happened? The Aussie Swiss here. The Swiss got stronger. The Aussie got weaker. And thus, we see this result. Now, we saw this play coming in in the 30 minute. We saw that they were rebalancing. You had plenty of time. It, you literally had hours before this happened. I mean, this thing just literally started to happen within the past half hour. But that means that you had over five hours notice before this actually took place. Now, didn't I say one to three hours before these trades unfold? I know I said that. I think I was very clear. Well, that's exactly what's happening. These trades are unfolding before our, our very eyes, and we literally had one to three hour windows before they happened. Now, again, I'm doing this in the smaller time frames. I don't do long-term trading. The reason I don't do long-term trading is because they're, cons they're constantly rebalancing their books. This type of nonsense that you see here is happening every day. Yeah, it's happening all day. It's good markets. And that's day. the nice thing. What we do is we, yeah. we look for intraday trading because we're always going to get a couple, three opportunities during a good trading day. We'll get a couple, three opportunities exactly. per session. And that's all we're exactly. looking for. You can make a very good nice living. The, 
and that's all we're looking for. We are not looking for, you know, we're lo quite honestly, we're looking for, you know, 20, 40 pips on some of these trades. It's not simple. It's not complicated, you know. Life is complicated we, in many and, other and fashions. And we try to keep you in but the trading, trades. We huh? try to. We we always trade with stop. Ricardo and I are very risk averse. We use the fat right. man as a risk management tool because it keeps us out of stinking trades that we have no business being in. We always trade with stop losses that are within our reason. And sometimes these 30 and 40 pip trades turn into 70, 80, 100 pip trades because you're going to let exactly. them run. There's no point in that. This is a perfect example right here. Aussie Swiss. Who trades Aussie Swiss that any you know exactly. of? I, I mean, say that. this is one of the most illiquid it. pairs out there. Illiquid. Yeah. Remember this word, illiquid pairs. And yet the banks I I, have placed their interest here. Aussie Swiss. Yeah, Aussie, Aussie Swiss. Swiss. Who, yep. Whoever told us. When was the last time somebody tapped you on the shoulder and said, you got to check this Aussie Swiss trade out, Joey? Exactly. It's huge. Yep. Nobody does. We you see know, it on the know, I remember. And look for it. We trade it. Exactly. I remember when I was in, when I was in college, and my buddies took me to the track to race, you know, to the racetrack for the horses. I didn't know a thing about betting on horses. But I remember one horse that I saw, and they called it the Dirty Dog. And I was like, I, you know, I told my friends, you know what? That one looks like a good horse. They go, oh no! I mean, that thing. Phew, look at the history behind it. And I go, I don't know. I think this is this is a shocker. The underdog, the one no one bet on. It was a 50 to 1 bet on that dirty dog. And guess what? The dirty dog won. 50 to 1 bet. And that thing hit. The ugliest horse you could ever come across. That's exactly what I think about the Aussie Swiss. The ugliest currency pair you could ever think of is the one that hit. And let's see how many pips this thing hit. Because your entry would have literally been around right here. So. If it was here, you're looking at 33 pips right out the gate. And it still has the potential to come down to this level, which would make it an even 47, possibly 50 pip drop. That's a pretty ugly currency that's playing out very well. Now, the euro looks like a very, very, how can I say this, pretty currency, because we all, everyone talks about the euro. Oh, the euro. It's you know it's it's, Our, it's she's the beautiful most looked upon currency. It's a beautiful pair. It's a beautiful pair. You know, however, it trades very ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take this. I'll take this mutt any day over this mutt <laughs> over this pedigree <laughs> because I know. Oh no, I hate when this happens. I know for a fact that. This mutt is going to play out better than this pedigree. Now, there's another way that you can look at trading as well. You know, I've always said it's about perception. It's about terms. You're looking for terms. If you find the right terms, then you know that you have the right risk parameters to take this trade on. Otherwise, you have no business taking a trade on, period. Well, in this case, I used to be a musician. I used to play the piano and I played the clarinet. Believe me, I did not want to play music. My mother forced me. It was punishment. I loved to play baseball, sports outside, but God, it was just you know murder for me to come inside and take lessons. And what she did me a favor because I look at I look at trading as if I was looking at music. You're going to have to figure out what triggers in your mind that makes you interpret something in the best format. And the reason I say that is because if the trade isn't playing my tune, I'm not interested. Well, for those of you that are art connoisseurs, if you're looking to buy a painting, which I would never do, you'll never ever hear me recommend someone buying a painting for a hundred thousand or a million dollars you know I'm beside myself when I hear someone has done that or when a painting is sold for 20 million I go what were they thinking really what were they thinking the artist is dead let him be you didn't understand why he why he drew that thing believe he was psychotic that's why he drew what he drew 
However, some people are willing to pay millions of dollars for psychotic paintings. I'm not. I'm willing to pay money to listen to good music. I love hearing music. I love jazz. I love classical. You name it, I like it. Yeah, San well, says no dally for you, though, huh? No. <laughs> no, Ricardo would rather buy a picture of his best trade last month. That's that, right. That's he'd pay exactly. money. Exactly. That is the one that pays, you know, that, 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 that makes it all worthwhile. If you know, if you're looking for a million-dollar painting, then don't you think you should be looking for that million-dollar painting that will give you that million-dollar trade, even though you're not going to be able to extract a million dollars out of it? But don't you think it feels good to know that you are on the right side of the trade? Isn't that worth a million bucks to you? Even let's, though it's let's sort of let's let's bounce. Yes, you're absolutely right. Let's bounce off a couple of uh, a couple of our our people in the in the room, our attendees, what's your exit target on that last trade setup, for example, or even this one? Tell us about what kind of an exit target you're looking for. Um, we always look looking, at the well, past. Yes. This is where we and go the to the reason why we look at the past when you get out. is because we look for the pivots. Now, for instance, here we know that they were going to reach this level, but we also know that they're going to test this level. And the reason they're going so to test this level is because... you go up on higher time frames to see the charts. No, I'm on the 15 minute. I'm just Why saying would you I might go, go up to the higher, higher time, frame. time frame to expand the, the chart to see some oh, yes. more pivots. You see what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Well, for instance, here, you know, I, I told you earlier before, I'm looking at 148.05, 148.10. I like this number. Why? Because and it's a, a cardinal time level, frame. too, 148.00. Exactly, you know. And. It looks like they're going to hit this level. Why? Because this was a level that they tested for buyers and sellers many times, and it was respected. They tested it for buyers, didn't find any, came down for sellers. Retested for buyers again, came down for sellers. They knew they found buyers here, so they retested it to this level. They knew they weren't going to find any more buyers here because historically it wasn't there. So they retested for sellers, and finally they broke through. Well. That's exactly what they're doing. They're repeating the same scenario. Now, if you can, if you can learn how to read these pivots the way we do, then you're on the right track. And if you can learn how to put this whole toolkit together along with a fat man, then your learning curve is going to be very short, very sweet, very productive, and you're going to be very grateful. Because I've had Students, both my Bill and myself, have had students that are great at trading chart pattern recognition, great chart pattern recognition traders. And when we've shown them where the volume lies, where the main interest lies, their trading has been explosive. To the extent that they no longer come to the room because they don't need us anymore. They know what they're looking for. I've had a few guys, you know, take off to Mexico, some take off to the Bahamas, others to France, out of all miserable places. France, really? You wanted to go retire in France. I don't know why. And I like not like the French like the Americans that much, but you know, that's just the way it is, I guess. So, but yeah, to France. You wanted to go live in France. I said, okay, fine. Knock yourself out. Send me a postcard. He did. When he learned how to identify trade setups with the Fat Man Indicator, and then put it all together with the toolkit, as many, many people that have gone through our training sessions have, they look at trading from a different perspective. It be Suddenly, it becomes clearer. They're saying, wow, there is a method to that madness. Ricardo isn't that psychotic as he seems over, you know, over the speaker. You know, there's, so, there's some truth and sense to his insanity. Not insanity. Yes, I'm a little psychotic once in a while, but believe me when I tell you, I try and make it as exciting as I can for you because I know that otherwise you won't get it. Well, the reason why you don't get it is because you don't understand volume activity and how it is portrayed and played out in the market. The Forex market is one of those markets, as I said, which is very deceiving because you don't get all the information. But let me tell you what you do get. You get 
banks that have divisions of financial engineers that counter-program every indicator out there known to man, from Bolger Bank, Candlesticks themselves, Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, Stochastic, RSI, MACD, you name it, they threw the kitchen sink at you. You didn't even know. And they slapped you across the head with it. And you use that, you use those tools which are lagging indicators because you don't understand volume activity. And the one thing that they can't counter program and they can't hide as much as they would like to is their volume activity. They know it, I know it, and now you know. The question is, how much more of it do you want to learn from it? Does it make sense to dedicate a little bit of time to become a little bit more informed of how they're thinking? Because we're not here to show you their psychology of trading. I can care less what their shrink is telling them. I care about where they're driving the market. I care about where their programs are leading them and leading me. Because we're swimming in a tank of sharks, and we're like the guppies, not parasites, because parasite is not a good word. But, you know, the guppies that basically stick to them and eat the barnacles. What do you call those, Bill? What, Bill? The suckers? The sucker fish? Yes. Couldn't you say it in a much kinder way? <laughs> hey, sucker. <laughs> So basically, we are like those fish. We are like those fish that basically clamp onto the shark and ride him. He's not riding us. We're riding him. Because that's what we are. We are but a grain of salt in this ocean. We are insignificant to them. We are unworthy in their eyes. Well, now, but we want to tell you something. Up, we want to pick up on their thinking and what they're doing and how... What I mean, they're after all, they're they're making the markets here. We're not. We're simply we're looking at the charts just the way they are. But they've got the advantage of having orders, exactly. and, and they have their waypoints that they they talk to yeah. one of they talk to one another. It's a real old boys network, the boys and girls club of institutional trading. They talk to each other all day long. Yeah, they do all day long. That is no joke. And so, yes, we are looking for opportunity. We talked about the pound cad. And look at this. It broke out just as well. Didn't do a tremendous move. But let me tell you something. This by far was one of the most simplified trades. 38 pips, 39 pips at this point. Very simple, nothing complicated. And look, it was coming down. And many of you would have said, oh, well, this is going to continue to go short. Well, well, this little bad boy here called the fat man, has been saying, no, you've changed your mind. We're going to go long. But if you didn't have this, you would have gone short. Why? Because it's been going short. You know, you're going to follow that saying, the trend is your friend. In Forex, that doesn't really apply that much. And you better learn it. You better remember it, because otherwise, they're going to give you a spanking. We're trying to show you how to give them a spanking. It's time to take control of the paddle. And believe me, it, it feels so good to be in the trading zone because this is one of those moments where you actually fall into what I call the trading zone. And what is that zone? When the clouds start to dissipate, the sun starts to shine through, the angels line up, and suddenly you hear a beautiful harmony. Slap yourself, I'm going to sing. Oh, no, no, oh, shut up. Good God. And this is that moment I have to put up where with this is my partner. He does. This is that moment where it just, it, it just, it, everything comes together. It's a hallelujah moment, and you and you realize that you've come, you've come to that peak of knowledge, to that moment of truth, where you can't be lied to anymore. That's what we're. That's what we're showing you. We're showing you hey, that the lies are. Over. Our, RM would like to take a look at the uh, at the sterling dollar, and this is probably a good example of of how the institutions jerk around the volume. See, this the trade pattern looks similar here. Sure. This is, but this is, but this is a different type of a setup because they. This is where a lot of the volume in FX is manipulative, and people come in. 
there's a lot of activity on the dealer side, and they they as Ricardo said very early in the in the uh, session about wood chopping. This is where they chop a lot of their institutional wood, and sometimes the follow through isn't quite what it should be because there are big orders on on top of these moves, and so the follow through is quite distinct is distinctly different. And you can see the fat man looks completely different on this setup, although it's very similar. It wasn't giving you the right signal from the get-go, mm -hmm. even though it broke no. out. There are other pairs to trade that will have have less noise and a cleaner setup, no question. Yeah, this is where you, the, yeah. See, these are the type of currencies: the euro dollar, the pound dollar, and, and the eight major currencies. These are the type of currencies that they use to basically confuse you. Why? Because they are not transparent. Look at how the fat man indicator is. Look how the volume is here. Look at how the heat map is. Look at how, you know, their price action and the pivots are here. Not that clean. Look at the pound cat. Cleaner. The transition to the heat map was nice, systematic. The volume was very clear, transparent. You had consolidation period. You had a transitional period. Everything, everything transitioned really smoothly. Where here on the pound dollar, what did you get? A lot of nonsense and chop. It wasn't clean. It wasn't transparent. It was confusing. It was, you know, a retracement. Let's induce traders to go short because we're going to go long. And that's what they did. They induced traders to go short after coming down short. Yet the syndicator didn't really say what it was going to do. I mean, look at it. It went flat. Where this one, same time frame, they broke out, nice angle in separation. You knew the cat was going down. You knew the sterling was going up. Very nice transition. We're here. You couldn't say, you couldn't see what was going on. It was ugly. Like I said, the pedigree doesn't look as good as the mutt. This mutt, which is the pound cat, is much, much more obedient. And sometimes you get that. Sometimes you get much more obedient pairs that are exotic pairs versus the majors, which are not as obedient. Now, I'm a dog lover just like everyone else. And believe me, I've had pedigrees and I've had mutts. And I can't say that I've loved my pedigrees more than my mutts. No. I've loved my dogs just the way they are. These are my dogs. They take, they take after their owner, you know? Well, in this case, I can't take ownership of a currency pair. I can't say this is the one and only pair that I'm going to trade. Why? Because this indicator is telling me you need to look at the different types of currency pairs that are out there because the banks are always changing their minds. Maybe next week they're going to be interested in the euro dollar. But right now they're interested in the euro Aussie. That's where their interest lies. That's why we saw this trade take off. So that's how you look, have to look at trading, especially in the FX markets. Because in these markets, like I said, they're very confusing, very humbling, very manipul manipulative, and very deceiving. What we're trying to show you is to, sh is to explain that all that nonsense can be eliminated if you just focus on the one thing that they're focusing on, they're focusing on their own volume activity. If they can't hide it. This is one of the very few indicators that I've come across in my trading career that literally expresses that. When I discovered what it was doing, I was perplexed because I couldn't come to the realization that it was in a very simple format, demonstrating how the banks are rebalancing their basket of currencies. But then a notion came to my mind. I remember that the Chinese had been buying all sorts of currencies, and they created their own basket of currencies to protect themselves, supposedly. And so, you know, they were hedging here, hedging there, constantly moving money around. Well. That finally came 
you know, it finally clicked, and I said, that's exactly what these guys are doing. They're moving money around. Different types of money, but they're moving money around. That's why when I saw the movie Wall Street, the last one that came out, says money never sleeps. They were right. Money never sleeps. It's in continuous motion. The question is, where is it? Where is it in motion, and where is its interest? Well, this little indicator will guide you. And if you believe what we've shown you, then they're gonna they're going to basically drop a uh, link for you to join us for our trading sessions. We have yeah, we've a U.S. Been session. We've been, uh, and Stanford's we have, been putting out the links periodically oh, throughout the session. We have the, there's the training room uh, there's the training room link that'll sign you up for bring you direct to the training room. It's, it's free to attend. Just come and join us and see if you like what you see. And uh, sure. then we can, uh, we, you know, we, we have our indicators for sale. We have a purchase page, of course. And uh, it's very easy to find. And we, we'll talk to you individually about that, if you like, when you're, at, when you're in our training room. We run them uh, at least. We, we will be running nothing this week during Thanksgiving. But we'd urge you to sign up for the, either the U.S. or the London Asia session. The link will be fixed tomorrow or today later in the day and we will be scheduling a few um, December sessions we're going to keep we'll, we'll be we'll be scheduling each each month we'll be scheduling for a month out so once you're registered with us you'll be registered you'll get notifications in your email of when the next uh, room that you've registered for is and they are free to attend and we're happy to have you but we still we still got 30 minutes here let's look around let's look around to see what we can see um, we were looking earlier at the Swiss cross, which is really reaching a sort of an overbought situation now in the short term, you might want to talk about the difference between how we use the time frames, Ricardo, to sort of narrow down, to, to, to identify trends and then narrow down our entry uh, levels, which are the key to trading, is obviously finding the correct entry level. So that well, from that we use the shorter time frames. Right. We do use the short time frames, and the reason why we do that is because we're looking for better entries. For instance, here, we would have chosen the five minute for this entry, knowing that the indicator was telling you it was going to rebalance in the 15 minute, because that's where it was really starting to rebalance. Yeah, the 15 and the 30 point out the trade, and then we use the five minute to nail down the entry and fine tune it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So as you can see here, very nice. Really simple transition. They, you know, it, this pair originally was going long. Look at this. I mean, you know, it was straight to the moon. If if you wouldn't have have been here with us, you would have said, "They're, you know, these guys are confused. They don't know what they're talking about." Look at this pair. It's, you know, it's trending. Right. You know, right. the trend. The trend, is right. the trend. Is that right? Well, let me tell you what your trend just did. It just spanked you, beat you, severely punished you, took your money, and now it's made a meeting between you and God. The type of meeting that you don't want, because this is a type of meeting where you start to pray. And let me tell you how your prayer goes. Oh God, oh God, please, please help me. Please bring this currency pair back. I promise I won't take another trade again. I'll demo trade for months. Because we've all been there. I've been there. No, Kelvin, you can trade any session you want. You can come to both multiple sessions. They're free oh, yeah. they're free to come to. The meeting that I want you to have with God is one of being grateful. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you have finally turned me on the right path. You have given me you have brought the light, you have enlightened me, you've given me the knowledge that I need to not make mistakes. To manage my risk properly. And you've used this poor individual to show me the way. <laughs> well, you got, you got on the right side of the horse. We've all been on the back end of the horse, facing the wrong way in trading. It happens yeah. all the time. It it's nice to finally get on the right side when you've got the in any market, when you've got all the indicators happens. working together. You can exactly, and that's what we show you. We show you to find that right picture, 
the terms, the ter you know, I always talk about terms. You're looking for terms. If they're not giving you terms, you don't have any business taking a trade. Why would you put yourself at risk? You know, I don't care what, you know, there's a lot of people say, oh, there are many ways that the market trades. I go, really? I don't care. I only care about one thing, where their volume activity is being driven. And at this point, this bad boy is telling me where their volume activity is being driven and where I should be paying attention. Because the minute that I discover where I should be paying attention is because they're paying attention in that direction as well. And so then, from that point on, I know it's on. And I have plenty of time. We identified this trade before it exploded, literally, half hour before it kicked in. And then suddenly, it kicked in. And it unfolded before your very eyes. And it's still not done. It still looks like it wants to come up one more, one more leg. The transition in this was simple. The transition in this was simple. It wasn't complicated. I am no better than you, in, and in no way am I pretending to be. I was lost just like you until I started to understand how volume activity was one of the most important pieces of the puzzle that was missing in my trading plan. And I didn't have the right technology to guide me there. You can use any sort of indicators. I'm not telling you you need ours by no means but we must be doing something right it means the technology must be working correctly because this is what we're basing our trades off of I'm not using moving averages I don't need them anymore you know a lot of people says you know you need to use a 5 and a 13 moving average cross really show it to me because I'm not using it anymore Using that moving average cross, I lost a lot of money. No, you got to look at the 50 and the 100 moving average. Oh, you know, it bounces beautifully between them. Well, it may have worked for you. It didn't work for me. And so if you really believe that what we've shown you actually makes sense, then maybe you're on the right track. Because they've counter-programmed against everything. Like I said, the only thing that they can't hide is their volume activity. That they must report. That's why we get candlesticks. And so this whole toolkit is based off of volume. It's based off of identifying where their volume is being driven. That is valuable. This is by far probably one of the most valuable toolkits you'll ever come across. Granted, the knowledge that myself and Bill provide is very good. It leads you in the right direction. That's what we're trying to do, to give you as much disclosure as possible so that you don't put yourself at risk. And if you do put yourself at risk, then you know what you're getting into. I'd like to know ahead of time what I'm getting into. Well, I wouldn't have known what I was getting into if I didn't see these indicators, if I didn't see this transition, if I didn't see the, this picture, if I didn't see this, this piece of music that I like to see, that I like to hear. Yeah, like we are looking hear. for different kinds of patterns. We're looking for patterns that that we define ourselves. We're painting a slightly different picture than, <clears throat> excuse me, what you're used to seeing. I think is his point. And once you get, once you come and see this done a few times, you'll begin to understand the patterns that we look for. We've had some, we we have we've had some very successful traders uh, come out of this. And some, sometimes you just don't grasp it. I think the key to the thing is understanding, Sanford just pointed out to me, price is irrelevant without volume. That's so true. Supply and demand is the key to any marketplace. You pick a market, supply and demand drives it. In our case, it's the institutional traders, it's the supply and demand of the institutional FX traders and their need to buy and sell various currencies and right. the fact of the matter is in FX is a uniquely suited game to this because it's a zero-sum game and when something is overbought it literally has to come down the key is to figuring out where in other words what currency pair is likely to rebalance most likely to rebalance 
and when, when the patterns begin to line up. And the fat man is our leading indicator, meaning that it leads us to the charts. And then we interpret the price charts a little bit differently than most people do. But the technology is solid. Nigel's um, technology works beautifully for FX, which is why we, uh, which is why we represent the FX side in the Hawkeye world. And um, it, this is simply a different interpretation and understanding that we bring to the table about the institutional marketplace, which is, after all, as I said before, it, we're, bringing, you know, we're bringing a ball and a bat to the game, but it's really their game. If they don't want you to play and they don't, they don't let you in. Well, they have their exactly. tricks. We have our tricks. Now we have mm -hmm. our tricks. This is, a, this, is one of those, this is one of those keys. If I had had this fat man when I was an institutional trader back in the day, it would have been a different ball game. I mean, a, literally a different game because uh, never have you seen a strength meter of its type, of its ilk, that really, really lines up in this marketplace. Now, someone asked me just a, a couple of minutes ago, <clears throat> excuse me, um, let me get my train of thought here, uh, about, oh, go ahead, Ricardo, I just lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read the uh, Q&A down here, and I, I lost my train of thought on the Let me, on the let me make another but comparison I'll, I'll for you. Oh, you know, it is said that traders are gamblers. Well, it's true. We do gamble. We like to believe that we can control the odds when we gamble. And if you're playing poker, what do some of the best poker players have? They can read the intent of their opponent. Why? Because their opponent can have a tell. Maybe his eye will twitch. Maybe his cheek will twitch. Maybe his lip will twitch. Maybe his, you know... Maybe something in his face will twitch, or maybe he just doesn't have a facial expression, and he's just stiff. And you can't, you couldn't read anything off of that guy. You couldn't beat it out of him. Well, that's exactly what you're looking at here. Here, you're reading their intent. You're calling their bluff. That's what you're doing. And they bluff all the time. That's a great point. They bluff all the time. And that's a lot of those pivots that you see, those yellow dots, those high isolated right. highs and lows. A lot of those are bluff moves. Yes. You see these moves here? This was institutional money. This was, this was big money coming in. They brought it up and they said, okay, this is the level. For no good, re for no good reason. They, just because they could. Just because they could. They said, this is a level, and here's where we're going to set up our play. Came down, tested for sellers. Not yet. Went back up, tested for buyers. Nope, no interests. Tested for sellers again. Nope, not there. Tested for buyers again. Nope, no one wants to play. Came down for sellers. Nope, tested for, nope. And then suddenly they came down. As soon as they came down at this level, and they identified this, this isolated low, which was lower than this previous one, then they came back up one more time, never retested this high up here. And then it just went flat, 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 and then bam. Suddenly they just slapped everyone across the head. And that's why it came down short. But they gave you plenty of time to notice their play. Now, many of you would have said, oh, well, you know, this is obviously, this is going to go long. Is that right? For those of you that were guessing this was going to go long, that was the biggest gamble and mistake you ever made. Because now they have you in their hands. And they know that your stop loss level is between 20 and 35 pips because that's where you begin to sweat. That's it's where you begin tolerance. to sweat. Yes, that pain tolerance. They know that you won't put up 50 pips. They know that you won't expose yourself that much. And so they know that if they hit that level hard and heavy, they're going to take you out. And that's exactly what they did. They took everyone out that had a 20 pip or 30 pip stop loss. And they don't apologize for it. Because, see, they have no emotions about taking your money. That doesn't exist. You have emotions, but they don't. Because they, 
they're in control of the game, you're not. Well, doesn't it make sense to redefine your trading plan? Don't you want to know what they're thinking, what they're feeling, where they're driving? I want to know. I, you know, I like to be the driver. I hate to be driven. I'm one of those um, backseat drivers, you know, that tells the driver what to do and, you know, and that they're doing it all wrong because I hate people that just, you know, can't drive. It drives me crazy. I hate incompetence. It drives me crazy because I do my job and I do it well because I don't like people telling me that I've done a bad job. However, in this case, you can't tell them anything. What are you going to tell them? Hey, I need you to take it in this direction. They're not listening. So you need to listen to them. You need to see what they're doing. And that's what this indicator does. It's telling you what they're doing. You can't scream at it because it's not going to listen to you. Remember, they can't hear you. But they are telling you what their game plan is. And interpretation and perception is everything in this game. Now, there was a currency pair that I wanted you to see, the New Zealand Swiss. As you can see, the Swiss went long, the New Zealand went short. In the 15 minute, same thing. Look at what it did. It came short. <clears throat> now, in each time frame, it was clear as stone, except in the five minute. The five minute sometimes is not that clear. The 15 minute and the 30 minute are. <coughs> now this was what I call a phase two trade, where they're taking this currency out of balance. Why? Because they were already driving this thing long. And guess, you know why they took it short? Do you want to know the answer? Because they had too many people riding their coattails long. And they saw the volume. And they said, no, no, no. We're not riding our coattails. We're going to show you that. I'm going to take you out. That's exactly what they did. They've taken everyone out. They've literally taken this pair out of balance, and they're going to rebalance it. Eventually, this thing is going to go long. But right now, their interest is taking it out of balance and taking everyone off of their coattails. That's what they're doing. This is the whole reasoning behind this trade. No other reason. Look at this. For three days, one, two, three, it's been going long. What was their total drive on this? From this point to this point, 123 pips. 123 pips. It took them three days to make 123 pips. And in one day, they knocked everyone out. 39 pips there, another 12 pips there. So it's a 50 pip move to take people out, to stop them out completely. They're literally taking you, this from out of balance. I was just going to say, from experience, I can tell you that you'll see a lot of this, these kind of shakeout trades during these holiday weeks when it thins out, and that's where you, that's where the fat man can be a really a lot of fun because you just see, you see that that phase trade, phase out trade where it just, see the angle and separation where the Swiss, I mean the uh, Swissie and the New Zealand are just running, in parallel like in tracks that whole rally, and then suddenly it consolidates a little bit. And look at the fat man just moving out from zero, basically. The Swiss is heading up, the, the New Zealand is heading down, and they're just cleaning out the books. They're just, yeah. what they're doing is taking all the weak longs to, to the cleaners. They just exactly. cleaned them out. But the, yeah. the fat man gave you that, the fat man certainly would have kept you out of getting long this pair. Oh. What you should have done, though, is just as soon as that heat map started to turn dark green and you saw a little volume come into this thing, the volume started to go up, and the fat man angle and separation happens, that's to us, our methodology, that's a trading signal. That's time to get short. Exactly. That's time to take the paddle and give them a spanking because you're not going to take the spanking anymore. I want you to take that negative mindset out. You are no longer on the bad side. You are no longer going to take the whipping. It's time to give the whipping back. It's time to give them the spanking. And if you're willing to take control, then we invite you to our room. 
We invite you to learn from us. We hope to share this information with you. We hope that it will change your perception of how this market ticks. Because this market is unlike any other market. See, unlike stocks and futures and commodities, stocks, futures, and commodities are on a centralized exchange. So volume must be disclosed there. Can't hide it. Well, can't really hide it in FX either. It can be synthetically created. What you can't see is how many orders they're running. Well, I can tell you that the reason that they're in this move alone, they've moved yards. And what is a yard? A yard is equivalent to a billion dollars worth of currency that they've moved. A billion notional. A billion notional, yes. That means that that's a thousand lots, a thousand contracts in the Forex or lots that they have moved to make this move. And that's what they've done. They've moved yards. Not yard, yards. Now remember, one of the things that this indicator tells you is it can tell you that certain currencies are in play. It doesn't mean that they're going to move them all. Remember, many cases, they can only move four pairs in that direction. Now look, this trade, the Euro Aussie, 147.97. We said 148.10, right? Well, we're very close. We're literally 10 pips away from this thing hitting. So if we look at the Aussie Swiss, and, and, Aussie you, Swiss. You, and you'll see the Aussie Swiss is another one. It, that was asked earlier <clears throat> about where we're going to hit the demand area down there. It, 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 the way I'm looking at this chart, it's not there yet. We're still in the, it's not there yet. We're still in it's three. Still Three speeds of bearishness, basically. If you look at the standard deviations on the heat map, the bearish volume is good. The fat man still shows angle Looking, of separation. So when that starts to curve, 8303 to exit on this one, either there or if they if they even go below that, 8292. If they take out the 8300 level, but oh, we always look at those cardinal levels like yes. 8300, a big figure. That's just a mm -hmm. that's good sense because. That's what the dealers do. They look at old po points, pivot points, and important points to them, support resistance levels. So if you have a multiple position on like a two lot or, or two standard lots, as we often put on, you just take part of your position off at your first support or resistance level, then you let the second one go. We often use, we use trailing stops, and um, we, we, we allow these trades to bloom when they've got more to them. Yes. We absolutely keep our hard stops in and we cut them off at the knees. If they're not cooperating, we just get out and look for the next trade. Let the setup come to us. But buddy. Cutting them off at the knees is a little bit yeah, too Yeah, that's uh, true. It doesn't. <laughs> what, <laughs> what about Gigi would like to know Sterling Oz? Sterling, Sterling Don't cut that one off at the, at the knees. What, do you, what are your thoughts on Sterling Oz? Let me Clearly making a move. So we talked about that one. That one was just like the uh, yeah. We Euro talked earlier about that one, correct? So, uh, leave it out. Don't don't take Sterling a trade there, boss. This one also very nice transition. You know, it was smooth. Look at this nice consolidation, and they kicked in. The next level on this one, I'm looking at one seventy seven forty four. But let me see what it looks like here. Actually, 177.23. That's where I expect them to make a stand. 177.23. If it breaks above that, then it'll definitely test this level. And the reason why they're going to test this level is because they have found sellers here. So if they have, if they know that they have too many people riding their coattails, they're going to literally start to unload right here at 177.40. Yeah, that's because their that's easy. their game. That's the institutional game. They'll just, that's at some point, game. they'll just cut this thing off. Yeah, literally. Simply because that's their level. They'll take it in. This is where that's enough. It's gone far enough. You know, the, exactly. the dealers are short or long, depending on the on right. what's happening, what currency yeah. fair we're looking it's at at the moment. Here they're long. Practically. And they'll eventually just say, okay, that's it. Yeah. Now, this is a 100-pip move right here. It's literally from this point to this point is 98 pips. So if you would have 
followed the direction of this toolkit, it would have told you, don't short it anymore because they're, they've changed their minds. You would have gone long. You would be up about 90, 95 pips right now. That's a pretty decent trade for a few hours. That's a pretty decent trade. So yes, there was much opportunity today, much opportunity. This one didn't really do a whole lot, the pound cat, but it was nice, smooth, clean. Nothing aggressive, you know, 51 pips, very simply for trade, you know, move very slowly. They didn't come back and re-challenge anything. They just said, let's just drive this thing up nice and smooth, boys, nice and simple, very simple. This one moved a little bit more aggressively. The Euro definitely moved a little bit more aggressively, and the Aussie Swiss as well. You know, a tad more aggressively. But there was great opportunity tonight where many people said the volume just isn't there. Well, you know, these are 50 pips right here. I don't care what anyone says, but I'll take what I can get. If they're only willing, if they're willing to give me 50 pips, I'll take them. If they're willing to give me 25 pips, I'll take them. If they're giving me 100 pips, I will take them. There have been trades where, oh, let me show you one. This one I took months ago. And we, and we put it here because it was really a unique trade. Do you remember when the Japanese basically came out and announced that they were going to double their bond purchases? Well, I got into this trade literally seven hours in advance. And I didn't put the fat man here because at the time we couldn't integrate it into this, you know, into the chart the way we currently have it now. So I was looking at it separately. I was looking at 50, I was looking to pick up 50 pips. And then suddenly this thing just exploded to the moon. And I picked up 254 pips out of this thing. And I regret getting out because it actually went up another 150 pips. This trade was a 400 pip move in one day. Now, I only caught 254 pips. I'm not complaining. And I would have never seen this coming if I wouldn't have looked at the fat man indicator. If I would not have been able to extract that individual currency strength and weakness, I would have never, ever caught this move, ever. So even right before the news, this thing can be very, very significant because it can lead you to their intent to where they're going to rebalance a specific pair because they've already made that decision. They're waiting for the numbers. In many cases, they know what the numbers are. You remember, they have division, divisions of economists that, that work for them, hundreds of them that gather data. And so they have more information at their disposal than you and I will ever have. So we have to use every tool out there to outthink them. Well, in this case, I think you found the toolkit that does that. At least I hope you feel that way as much as I do. Because it really comes down to, like I said, perception. Perception is everything. I'm not here to sell you smoke. I'm not here to make it exciting for you. I'm not here to make it depressing I'm sorry, did, for you. Did you, say, did you say you were smoking something? No, no, I did not. I said oh, I'm not here to sell mind. anyone smoke. One thing that you will see me and Bill do is that we will show you how this works real time. Normally, Wednesdays, either we do a London session or we do an Asian session. And we trade real time. We look for real trade opportunities live in the market. Why? Yeah, we call those our free trade. We call those our free trade sessions. We just basically we don't we don't look at the indicators piece by piece. What we do is we go out and look for trades, we and we take your we field your trade questions. It's more for traders, if you have you know setups that you're interested in, or if you're just learning how to use our tools, you'll see how we formulate the methodology, our trading methodology, in our minds. But we're basically looking for trades in those sessions, and it's either London, the London Open at 2 a.m. Eastern, or it's the Asia Open, the Tokyo Open at 5:30 p.m. Eastern time, yep. but that's 
we we post those in our we'll post those on our online. We haven't updated that particular box for London Asia yet, but we'll have at, starting next week after the Thanksgiving week. We'll we'll have some sessions. We trade Rick. We trade on a simulated on demo account only because it's a kind of a regulatory issue. We're not CTAs. We're not. We have we have to watch you know what we're what we're physically doing in our room. So we trade on we've making the choice to trade on demo but we take the live trades I mean it's not uh, we're not we're not trying to build a track record for legal reasons uh, here in the room we're simply trying to demonstrate how the technology works so it's it's just a decision that we've made um, because we have both Ricardo and I have been NFA regulated forever and we know what a pain they are they have just decimated our industry in the US as you you may or may not know, depending on where you trade. But uh, if you're used to the U.S. marketplace, you know what a, you know how onerous our regulators can be. So we 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 would rather not straddle a gray area. We just kind of keep it clean, and that way we um, that way we're fine. We're we're getting to that point now. We can wrap up with a few more questions. Whatever you've got, we've got we've got yes. Phil Newton coming next, and um, he's the scheduling Sanford if I'm not mistaken no nobody's here yet so if nobody's here we'll continue to take your questions Ricardo and I could talk for hours um, if as long as he doesn't sing or tell you about how you know his mom used to slap him around then I'm <laughs> fine we'll, we'll go anywhere uh, we'll, we'll touch we'll touch on this we were asked about will these indicators work on any feed they they run on ILQ data feed beautifully because it's an institutional feed and they've added the pairs that we need to power the fat man properly there's a few oddball pairs that are needed uh, put put up the fat man if you would Ricardo so we can see this while we're talking about it this is the 30 minute fat man uh, this is it ha we have there's 40 plus currency pairs involved roughly in breaking this thing down it's a compl it's it's a data cruncher in terms of an algorithm it's a bit of a data hog when you first turn on your mt4 it can take a take it could take a minute or two to cycle through all of the uh, cur currency pairs it's crunched because it really is taking a lot of data out of all these pairs and it plots the lines individually the the and the more robust the price feed the better the greater the tick data that you're getting then you the more accuracy you have on when these things because remember volume is relative in FX it's all relative on how much you are actually seeing based on the liquidity aggregator that's being put out in front of you ILQ direct FX uh, FXCM has a as a new um, a data feed that they're putting out where we've got uh, uh, a ninja project that we're working on uh, with them, they have a very nice, robust feed. Uh, FXCM is not the old FXCM. Uh, now it's a, a very good shop, straight through processing. But ILQ is very good. Uh, and you know, if you if you come to our rooms <coughs> and you're curious if your provider works, we can test with the operations people, check with them, and find out. I have to look at the feed a little bit, make sure they have all the currency pairs to power the fat man. It, it normally, I mean, if you go to, you know, a second tier liquidity provider, the fat man may not work. Just, you know, I, just full disclosure, it may not. We're not, we don't represent any particular company, but we have a good partnerships and relationships with uh, both ILQ and particularly DirectFX. If you're non-US, as I assume a lot of you are, I we would recommend trying signing up for a, a DirectFX demo. Um, via our website you can just once you're on our website you can just tool around we recommend you read the first four sections a very a lot of information a lot of great information on the indicators our sort of our philosophy if you will uh, it's works works very well on ninja trader depending on the price feed um, we're not sure kinetic I'm not a hundred percent sure on but ninja trader is a wonderful uh, a wonderful platform as well uh, it powers the fat man very well we particularly we like mt4 we made the business decision to get into the mt4 side because no one in Hawkeye was really uh, well first frankly they don't understand or train the way we do because we have a little bit different 
sort of depth of knowledge of the FX market. And MT4, as you all know, uh, hopefully, is a low barrier to entry. You can open up a small account with MT4. It's very simple to get demos sure. in and out of. And as I said, if you get the right liquidity aggregator with one of these big companies that deals uh, with institutional liquidity like First Derivatives, which is a name that nobody knows, but if, frankly, they are one of the inside baseball names that, that we know, I know very well, because they are a liquidity provider. They're a vendor of liquidity to large institutions like vending, like uh, merchant banks, investment banks, you know, different types of shops. And to so, interrupt, they just broke our barrier at 148, 148.10 on the euro housing. I see that. That was a big break because that's a cardinal point. 148.00, you know there's interest there. There's old wide bar resistance. There's pivots around that area, so you know that was a, an option barrier. And now it looks like they're going to run it up to the old, uh, to the old high. Yeah. We are a, we, we're, Rick, we're an affiliate of Hawkeye. We represent the MT4 side. Uh, we, we, are, we are independent, though, in terms of the fact that obviously we're in, we we're we're in the our business model is such we sell our we sell our own product, part of Hawkeye, but it's our own product. They support us. They fully support us operationally, and uh, every uh, and everything along those lines. So we're part of Hawkeye, but we're a different part of Hawkeye. That you you're not going to get the kind of training that you get here from Hawkeye. Likewise, we don't train uh, the way Nigel and and uh, Randy Lindsay do on their side of Hawkeye either. However, we urge you to come in if you like FX. We urge you to come in and see us. Talk to us. We can get we can sell you any of the indicator packages for sure. But uh, what we want to make clear is that trading can be fun. You look at it from a different perspective. It's the FX market is uniquely suited toward trading because it trades 24 hours. And the book that they pass, when I say they pass a book, I mean institutions literally talk to their desks, whoever's representing their business. When one shift is going home, another shift is coming in, except for Fridays, obviously. And they t literally talk to those people on the desk, the junior traders. They help them set up. And then they talk to the big guys and say, look, you've got You've got Jack's macro fund here at this level. You've got the yep. bid underneath the market. You've got the stops. You've got the barrier options. We've got a lot of option orders up here and down here. And they pass this information along. And FX trading is uniquely situated because you can find a few good trades almost every session when the market is moving. That's why we want you to come learn from us. We'll tell you when. We'll, we'll talk to you about those types of things. We'll answer your questions. My email address is bill at hawkeymt4.com, and I'm always around. In fact, I'll put it up right now. Bill at Hawkeye. And all I have to say is the following to close is if you want to learn to trade like a hawk and rise like a phoenix, then come join us at Hawkeye MT4. If you feel that we're helping traders trade with more confidence, you'll come join us at hawkeymt4.com. If what you've seen shows you that we're providing you a new vision and trading technology, you come join us at HawkeyeMT4.com. And if you like the trades that we've shown you today, and you see that we've, bit, we've hit it right on the money, you'll come join us at HawkeyeMT4.com. And so I want to thank Morgan. I want to thank Sanford for inviting us again. This has been, I believe, our uh, third time or our fourth time. Uh, you know, Sanford, my sharing. man. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate sharing. you very much. You know, I know you're there. He is here. Uh, and I want to thank you all for joining us. I hope that you've enjoyed the session. I hope that we've made it exciting. I hope that we've made it informative, enlightening, and I hope that we've changed your perspective of trading. Thank you very much. Now, now we're off. We're, I just fair warning. We're all we're off to bed because it is late here. It's it's Chicago. It's 3:30 a.m. So we're going to be heading out. And um, it's been great to great to meet you. Uh, and it's great to see you. Money back guarantee. We could set something up uh, for you. We offer a payment plan, Edwin. That's probably the best way to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the. Uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation. Come and see us at at HawkeyeMT4.com. And as I said, you know, drop us a line. Uh, Sanford, maybe you can put up the link to the to the uh, website again. 
check out the website, read it. It's very good, and um, uh, we hope to see you guys again. Be sure to be sure to let us know that you uh, that you caught us through Trading Pub, and uh, and uh, drop me a line. It's great to meet you. Great to see you. Have fun trading FX, kids. And uh, I hope the one. I hope the rest of the hope the rest of the session goes great there, my man Sanford. Take it easy, guys. Over and out.